Hi, welcome to Aussie Wristwatch. I'm Jessica Liley. This is my channel where I just love talking about watches. Now, as a watch enthusiast and beginner, I don't know if I'd call myself a beginner collector just yet, but I'm getting there. I've had a very steep learning curve recently in that um, there are a lot of terms, watches, styles, movements, I have no idea what people have been talking about or very little of an idea. So part of the reason I started this channel was as an outlet for my hobby, but to learn something in the process. So today I thought I'd make a video for us novices out there. Yep, we are going to go through the terms associated with watches and collecting. So we know what people are talking about when they say lug. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Like I actually didn't know what the lug to lug thing was for a very long time until very recently. So let's get cracking and hold on to your hearts because this is going to be a long one, but it's going to be worth it. Cue the intro. Okay. Now, before we get started in earnest, do me a favor, please help me out with the YouTube algorithm gods, which is working by the way. So please hit the like button please, please, please. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and come back. Um, I just spend a bit of time having some fun and being lighthearted about loving watches. I get some really funny comments, um, which I actually do read all of them. I've tried to respond to all of them, but it's getting a little harder as more people watch, but I'm across them guys. Um, and all of them make me laugh, whether I agree with them or not, uh, it's totally fine. So let's keep going. Okay. Today we're going to do glossary of terms, which I know could sound a little bit dry, but honestly, there's some shit that I just didn't know that I was like, holy cow, I really don't know what they're talking about when I'm sitting in that store or standing there looking and admiring a watch and I just kind of wanted to learn. So this is me providing my community service and helping us out there. All right, let's get cracking. So first, and we're going in alphabetical order, automatic. Okay, a mechanical watch that is wound by the motion of the wearer's wrist rather than the twisting of the crown. The motion of the wrist moves a counterweight called a rotor that then powers the main spring which turns the watch's gears. Balance wheel, a weighted wheel that oscillates at a constant rate, usually one oscillation per fraction of a second, moving the watch's gears and allowing the hands to move forward. Balance spring is a delicate spring, often made from metal, but sometimes silicon, attached to the balance wheel that regulates the rate at which a balance wheel oscillates. The balance spring is also often referred to as a hairspring. Barrel, the cylindrical enclosed apparatus with geared teeth that contains the main spring, thus houses the watch's power reserve a, a watch's power reserve can be expanded by adding additional barrels. Okay, I definitely didn't know that. Bridge, a plate or bar that is mounted to the main plate, forming a frame that houses the inner workings of a mechanical watch. And caliber, a synonym for movement, most often used when a manufacturer is denoting a specific model name for a movement. Excellent. Case back, the reverse side of a watch that can be removed to access the inside of the watch. Chronograph, big one guys, big one. A type of watch that features an additional stopwatch function in addition to the main time. A chronograph can either be quartz or mechanical or a hybrid of the two and is activated by a set of pushes protruding from the side of the case. For example, my tag Hoya Monaco is a chronograph. I will show you a picture. Chronometer, a watch that has been independently tested by the official switch chronometer testing institute, COSC, in Switzerland, or any other official governing body in other countries. In the case of the former, watches are tested over the course of several days in six different positions at different temperatures, while remaining accurate to within minus four to plus six seconds per day for mechanical watches, or plus zero seven per day for quartz. Complication. This was a big one. 
Oh yeah, I know it's embarrassing, but complication is an additional function of a watch that goes beyond telling the time, like a stopwatch chronograph. We've learnt that already, remember? Calendar or a moon phase indicator. Complications require additional parts and make a watch more expensive and complex to build. Crown, a small knob on the side of the watch case that can be used to adjust the time, date, and if your mechanical watch isn't automatic, you wind the watch to keep it running. Like one of my Panerai's that I have. Every three days, I gotta wind that baby. It's kind of fun. Crystal, the clear protective cover that shrouds the watch face, made from either synthetic sapphire, ac acrylic, or glass. Synthetic sapphire is the most expensive to produce. Though it is considerably more scratch resistant than either acrylic or glass crystals. Deployment clasp, a type of watch strap buckle that closes by folding in on itself, then clasping. Makes the strap easier to take on or off and keeps the leather from getting worn or stretched out. I actually really enjoy a deployment, de deployant clasp just as much as I love falling over my words and my lisp. Dial, also often referred to as the face, the dial displays the time and features numerals and markings as well as the hands. Pretty straightforward guys, even I know that one. Okay, dive watch. A dive watch is a water resistant watch, but not all water resistant watches are dive watches. True dive watches should meet a specific standard for diving, like an ISO 6425 which requires the watch to be water resistant to at least 200 meters, feature a unidirectional rotating bezel and some form of illumination. Escapement, an internal component in a mechanical watch that transfers the power from a wound up watch into the movement of the watch's second hand by driving the balance wheel at a steady rate. Hmm. Most water watches use a lever escapement or lever escapement comprised of an escape wheel with a lever with two pallets. The escape wheel is connected to the gear train, which, which receives energy from the main spring, and the lever and pallets lock and unlock the escape wheel at a steady rate. The component is responsible for a watch's ticking noise. That's pretty cool. Exhibition case back, also called an open case back. This is a transparent cover on the back side of the watch case that shows off the inner workings of the movement. It's also one of my more favorite features of a watch, to be honest with you, because looking at the movement is, is pretty cool. Frequency, the speed at which the watch ticks or beats, measured in either vibrations per hour or hertz, most modern high-end mechanical watches beat at a frequency of 28,800 VPH or 4 Hz. Watches that beat at 36,000 VPH or 5 Hz or higher are considered to be high beat watches. A watch's frequency is controlled by the oscillations of its balance wheel. Okay, flyback chronograph. This is one I still try to wrap my head around. A type of chronograph that can be reset without stopping the chronograph function, which is necessary in a normal chronograph. It's particularly useful among pilots and other users who need to record multiple times in quick succession. Yeah, I'm still not entirely sure about that one, but we'll come back to it one day. Gasket, a rubber neoprene or plastic ring used to seal the gaps between the case and the case back crystal and crown to prevent water or dust from entering the case and damaging the movement inside. Gear train, a system of gears that transfer power from the mainspring to the escapement. GMT, I love this one. It stands for Greenwich Mean Time. A watch referred to as GMT has the ability to track two time zones at once. Originally developed by Rolex for pilots in the 50s. They're particularly useful, useful for any frequent flyer. Now, having said that, as a frequent flyer, or at least a former frequent flyer, I haven't actually used that function very much, um, but I will, and I'll report back. Okay, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, so please forgive me. Gouache, an engraved ornament pattern often used on watch dials comprised of in intricately intertwined lines. Hacking seconds, also called stop seconds. This function will stop the seconds hand when the crown is pulled out. This makes it easier to synchronize a watch with another timepiece. Hand wound, it 
it refers to a mechanical watch that doesn't automatically wind, like the Panerai I have. Hand-wound watches are powered by manually turning the crown to wind up the main spring. Haute horology. It means, in French, oh, sorry, translated to English, it's French for high watchmaking and is used to distinguish watches or watchmakers that demonstrate extreme proficiency in watch design, technical innovation and finishing. Horology. The art and or science of measuring time. Hybrid smartwatch, a classically styled analog watch, usually quartz powered, that also features digital smart functions like actively tracking and push notifications. I really don't like smartwatches, but that's a story for another day, I suspect. Indices, the markings on the dials of, of a watch used to represent the hours in place of numerals. In high-end watches, these are usually applied or attached to the dial rather than printed on. Jewels. I really wanted to know what this one was. Synthetic rubies, sometimes synthetic sapphires, used as bearings at the heaviest points of wear in a watch movement in order to reduce friction between moving parts and increase a movement's lifespans. Cool. Jewels have a naturally slicker surface than metal. For example, the coefficient of friction between two pieces of steel is about 0.58. Well, the coefficient of sapphire and steel is about 0.15. Now, I don't know about you, but the last time I used the term coefficient was in like year 10 math, but it just proved that there's actually use for it after school. So kids, keep learning your maths. Jewels are only used to increase the accuracy of the movement and are not for decoration. Lugs, here we go, guys. <laughs> the protruding pieces of metal at the top and bottom of a watch case where the strap is attached. The two ends of the lug hold a spring bar which holds the strap in place. Woohoo! Luminescence, colloquially referred to as loom. Luminescence is the glow given off by the watch numerals, indices and hands that have been coated with a photoluminescent material, loomed in other words. While early watches used radioactive radium to create loom, think of the good old Panerai for examples, Watches now use non-radioactive phosphorescent substances like stro stro <laughs> strontium, sorry, aluminate, um, as by way of example. Magnesium is a metal compound inside a watch that can often be magnetized when introduced to magnetic fields, thus causing a serious loss of accuracy. Did I just say magnesium? I meant magnetism, duh. This happens mostly when the balance ring becomes magnetized and sticks to itself, causing the watch to run faster than usual. Fortunately, this problem can be fixed quickly and easily as a watchmaker or apparently at home, but I'm not too sure about that. Uh, it is enough of a problem, however, that some higher watchmakers use soft iron cages to protect the movement from magnetic fields or use silicon balance wheels to do so they do not become magnetized. Okay. Main plate, the base on which all parts of the mechanical watch movement are mounted. Main spring, a torsion spring that becomes tightened when a watch is wound, thus storing the energy of the watch. The force of the spring unwinding powers the watch. The main spring is housed inside a small drum called the barrel, which we have spoken about earlier. Um, movement, the inner working mechanism of watch that can be either mechanical or quartz. We've talked about it earlier. Power reserve. The length of time that a mechanical watch can run once it's fully wound. Most entry level watches have a power reserve of about 40 hours. Um, and then many higher ends can run for several days at a time. Sometimes watches will feature a power reserve gauge indicating that the watch is fully wound. I have um, the power reserve gauge of 72 hours, I think on the front of the Luminor Douay, and I've got the power reserve of 72 hours on the back of the Pan 422. All right, um, pusher, a button on a chronograph watch which stops, starts, stops, and or resets the chronograph mechanism. Majority of chronographs have two pushes, one for starting and stopping the mechanism and another for resetting. Ports, and this is something that I had to learn. It's a battery powered watch, everybody. I know you all knew that, but for the benefit of me. The battery sends an electric signal via a microchip circuit to a small quartz crystal that vibrates at a precise rate. 
pretty cool, huh? Retropante chronograph. Also called a double chronograph or split seconds chronograph. This adds an additional seconds hand and push it to the standard chronograph function. The additional seconds hand moves in sync with the standard seconds hand, but stops when the extra pusher is depressed. It allows the user to record two times at once. Repeater, it's a high-end complication that chimes to denote the time at the push of a button on the watch case. Um, skeleton is similar to an exhibition case bag, but a skeleton watch shows off the inner workings of the watch but does so through a transparent or partially cut out dial so that the movement can be viewed from the front of the watch. It's pretty cool. Turbion, a type of escapement housed in a rotating cage that is meant to counter the negative effects of gravity on a movement. While the movement was originally intended for pocket watches, they've moved to wrist watches as a way to showcase the height of a manufacturing watchmaker's abilities and as such, they do command exorbitant prices. Um, I have a friend who loves those watches and like tries to, to get them. And I totally see why, because that's bloody amazing. But I just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't love them as much as that, but I'd love to know if others do. I think the ingenuity behind it is fantastic. I think for sure, but I just don't know if I want to be walking around seeing the inner workings of my watch from the front of it all day, every day. Anyway, a winder, a box or case or a vault that gently rotates an automatic watch to keep the mainspring fully wound when it isn't being worn. Now, I use those because I don't rotate my watches through enough to wear them every day without having to wind them if I don't. Um, some people don't. I've heard some people uh, lock their watches or their collection in a safe and then they like have a couple out and they rotate them that week and then lock them up and so on and so forth. If I did that, I'd probably never wear the watches that aren't like in that vault somewhere. Um, I sell watch winders, by the way, if you want to check out my shop, just a lace plug. But yeah, I mean, there's some pretty cool terms in there that help me shed some light on understanding more of the intricacies of watches, watchmaking, and just general knowledge. So I don't feel like such a doofus uh, when I go in the store, because usually I just walk in and go, that's pretty. I wonder if that'll look nice on. And maybe that is the approach to take. But I think also having a bit of respect for the watchmaking in and of itself I think it's healthy and I'm I would I would like to understand that more from that point of view um so you know a glossary like that I found exceptionally helpful just to understand some basics I'm not going to remember everything on that list right now I think over time I will the more I've gotten into this hobby um and the more I've read about brands and stories and histories the more that has just generally sunk in on a longer term basis um yeah so <laughs> I don't know if that's been a help for you. It's definitely been a help for me, guys. Again, if you've enjoyed this and you've stayed this long, thank you. Please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And also, please come back. Um, I do videos on reviews of watches I have hands-on or haven't. Um, I do reviews on the papers, whatever. Uh, one day, hopefully, I'll be big enough that people will just send me watches and I can review them all hands-on. But until then, I have to improvise. So please. Thank you.